Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 368. And our lesson title this morning is Prototokus Restoration. We're talking about the restoration of the creation under the hand of the Prototokus sons. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Scripture teaches <laughs> the physical creation is waiting for the glorification of the sons of God. Turn to Romans 8, verse 19. For the earnest expectation. The word earnest comes from a Greek word meaning eager. For the earnest expectation of the creature or the creation waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. So the creation, which is a living entity, sentient being, <coughs> understands that it's going to be made free at the hand of the sons of God when they are glorified. Would you describe the creation as being two creatures connected, the primary and the secondary, or one creature in entirety? Oh. Two intelligences. Okay. <clears throat> one temporary, one permanent. And the temporary knows that it's temporary. Yes, but also knows that it's once again going to experience the purpose for which it was created. Everything that the Father creates delights in functioning and its utility and its purpose. Sure. And what you find when you read this, it talks about God, because of his master plan, took away the functioning mm -hmm. of the secondary creation so that his plan for his sons could come to fruition. He did that by corrupting, having the secondary creation corrupted through the Luciferian fall and all the rest of that, which would create the conditions in which the sons of God could become overcomers. You could not have that in the original primary creation. It's impossible because there is no ability to manifest a condition where a person would be tempted. Right. Righteousness uh, would not allow it. Yes. So, there would be nothing to liberate. No, because there's no such thing as captivity. Hmm. Any thought on a neg there's no negative thinking. It's impossible to conceive anything negative because Primary creation exists in life, ascending stages of light, which is life. No darkness whatsoever. You have to create something in which that condition can gender be gendered, <clears throat> and the only way that would happen was the creation of matter, which is a lesser functioning element. Yes. So the Father designed a creation that he would not corrupt, but that it would become corrupted, henceforth bringing forth the conditions for us, his sons, to liberate, overcome. So he has literally allowed the creation to fall under disarray so that we would have the overcomer status. And that's just amazing. That is the, the totally, yes. He allows it <laughs> to go from perfect to corrupted and then back in yes. to perfection. Yes. He's allowing the sons to qualify for the position that he wants to give them in running the creation, his creation. So all of this, Paul says, all things are for your sakes. So all of this is part of the Father's plan. 
And the father not wanted other sons. I was thinking about this the other day. <clears throat> you would have basically the situation that you see in uh, Revelation where you would have the angelic host, the father, the son, and worship and everything would be right. Lucifer would be there, unfallen, you wouldn't have a human race. You would just have unimpeded joy, peace, righteousness for eternity, unbroken. Hmm. But because the Father wanted sons, he had to create this so that the sons would have an opportunity to qualify for the position that he's called them to in Romans 8. Hmm. Now we know that <clears throat> anyone who's born again is promised the restoration of those things that they have lost. Mm -hmm. Not restoration necessarily in exactly that thing, but some form of recompense in the heavenly uh, environment. Yes. Is that true of the creature itself? Since the creature, and we read here in verse 20, not mm -hmm. willingly, mm -hmm. is the creature recompensed in some way as a result? Sure, by regeneration. So the restoration of it is the recompense. Okay. It's given the ability to function <clears throat> in the capacity for which it was created, and it receives joy in being able to do that. I was really talking about the period of loss, which it does not receive the joy, which is now. How is that, how is that repaid? That's the wrong <clears throat> word to use, but you know what I mean. But the will of the creation is manifest. The creation wants to be free. If it's free, then it will operate at its maximum capacity. Okay. That's the joy. That's okay. the recompense. Yes. Not willing, but by reason gave the same in hope. So the mm -hmm. whole creation was informed. Sure. It's going to undergo devastation only to be restored. Praise that's, the Lord. Praise yes. the reason. Lord. Yes. That's why they're waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Right. Right. They know more. Than anyone then, else. Sure. sure. But let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the heavens and the earth know that they will experience tremendous affliction at the hands of the Luciferians before they are liberated. Jeremiah, second chapter, verse 12. And we're going to go into a little bit of uh, what I call biblical cosmology. Excellent. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate. The word desolate there comes from a Hebrew term, harib, which means laid in ruins, mm. saith the Lord. So what's being said here, now the heavens have already been told that they are going to experience corruption. They're also being further told that before they're liberated, they're going to experience tremendous, tremendous ruin. The whole secondary creation is going to be devastated before this thing is concluded. Yes. Mr. Jones, I imagine that the answer is going to be yes, but I want to know why is the creation experiencing pain. Why? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. It's in torment. Sure. Okay. Because of the affliction at the hands of the fallen and evil mm -hmm. Luciferians. Mm -hmm. Who we, we read in uh, Psalms 82. They have the earth out of its functioning. Yes. Yeah. They don't care about God's order the way God has designed the creation to function they're misusing just like the humans here 
are polluting the earth for their own aggrandizement. The whole creation, those aspects of it that are under the evil Luciferian influence are suffering tremendously. So we understand that everything which is righteous, whether it be the creation itself, the host that's in the creation, uh, Ezekiel 31, 16 is what I'm thinking of, those that drink water will be in paradise. The humans, those that come through the Adamic condition, those, so those three groups and any others which I haven't mentioned, who are loyal, go through pain and suffering. And evidently that's a requirement of the Lord to come out the other end and have qualify the of To qualify for a, the place that's being the end result, in other words. It's going to be a division. Everybody who is not lined up is going to end up in the torment region. Everybody who is yielded to the will of God voluntarily is going to wind up in a paradise region in one place or another. So the creation itself, not the host that's in the creation, the creation itself, the structure, is also qualified. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. Mm. So Mr. Jones, there's a difference between tolerating the circumstance or warring against the, the cause. So there, there's those of us that will tolerate the existence that we currently have because we know God's master plan. It ends up being that, you know, uh, we can go to heaven. Okay, instead of living on the new earth. Mm. But there's those of us that, that don't want to exert any kind of effort knowing that we're going to have salvation, eternal life. Mm -hmm. So it, it just seems strange that there's a choice that's been made. Will you desire better for yourself so you will seek it? Or are you just going to float along, you know, being satisfied with what you understand about the word? Well, that's the Father's way throughout the scripture. You read, he presents the plan and he says, well, you make a choice. He leaves that to every single individual will be in eternity as a result of the decision, that he, the sovereign decision he has made. So then that makes the, the, the dictate that those who are waiting on the Lord, and the Lord has already done everything, so he's made provision that if you want to go farther beyond where you're at, the, it, the sky is the limit. Actually, there is no limit. You can go. But if you're waiting on the Lord, He's already done everything. You're you're not helping. You're not you're not qualifying for a higher position. You're just gonna settle in at, at the uh, the new or the, uh, the new eternal one. life. But Well that, that term waiting on the Lord is a, a rationale for somebody doing not doing what they know they should do. It's an excuse. Because you have if you have the Holy Spirit in you, then the Holy Spirit is telling you to be emotional. That that's that's not gonna yeah. fly. Yeah. You're just trying to make a rationale so you can do what you want to do. Have your cake and eat it. It won't fly. But let's go on. We've got a lot to cover. Not too much time to do it in. So here we see that the heavens are being warned that there is going to be <coughs> Uh, uh, radical destruction unloosed before there is deliverance. Now the heavens are not going to be delivered all at one time. It's a stage series of liberations. We're going to see scripture to illustrate that. Isaiah 34, 1 to 4. Now here is a judgment that puts Jeremiah 25 in the shade. Mm. Isaiah 34, verses 1 to 4. Come near, you nations, to hear. Uh, are you there, Georgia? I am, thank oh, okay. you. Come near, you nations, to hear. And hearken, you people. So this is directed at all the creation. This is a, this is a declaration of all 
the creation intelligences, starting with every race, every being on this planet. Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Nations, people. Now notice what this <coughs> this prophecy, who it's directed at. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. Let's break this down. Nations, people, starting with the earth matrix. Let the earth hear. Now, <clears throat> basically what he's talking about, <clears throat> the earth is referring to the earth matrix. It comes from a term, Milo, the word therein, Milo, which means <clears throat> the kingdoms within its interior all that is therein within the earth matrix <coughs> the world so you have two words here the earth then you have the world now the word world comes from the hebrew term tabel talking about the globe surface world in all things that come forth of it. It's talking about the races that have and will migrate from the subterranean to the surface. So it's addressed to every single session being on this matrix. <clears throat> Past, present, future. More emphasize on the future. Verse 2, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, goi, in the Hebrew, groups, ethnic groups, kingdoms, uh, uh, groupings of races, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. <clears throat> the word slaughter there basically is referring to <clears throat> the devastation. So what is re this is referring to every single intelligence resident on the surface of this world in its interior is going to undergo a judgment. Those that don't match up are going to experience slaughter. Total unequivocal defeat and judgment. Then he goes on. Bear with me a moment. <clears throat> They're slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. He's talking about everything that's mortal, capable mm -hmm. of dying. It's going to go undergo that judgment. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host, the word host here is the same word as armies. It's talking about all the armies of heaven, in the original Hebrew, of the heavens, shall be dissolved. The word there translated dissolved is, re is referred to as um, literally <coughs> comes from a uh, Hebrew term makah, which means wasted away. So all the armies in all of the heavenly regions are going to be wasted away. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their host armies 
shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. So he's talking here about beyond the judgment of Jeremiah 25, mm -hmm. which pertains to the earth, the surface world, its inhabitants, you're going to get a further judgment later on in the tribulation period. Events are going to take place in the heavens that are going to affect every heaven in existence. This is part of the second coming judgment. This takes place before the second coming judgment. Just be a bit more specific, please. Well, you get great tribulation. Okay. You get all the events to take place. You get Ezekiel 38 mm -hmm. with the armies of Gog and Magog. Mm -hmm. God is using all of this to bring forth different individuals for judgment. Agreed. So upon the, let me use the word, completion of this, the next major event that happens is the Lord appears on the earth to establish his... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Before that, you get the judgments of Revelation, is, then you get the second coming. Okay. Is this part of what you would call the Armageddon experience? Um, it sounds yeah, like it's going on at the yes, same time. Yes, it continue, it's a continuation of, of that. It. Right. But what you're looking at Armageddon takes place on the earth. Agreed, agreed. So, so essentially, this is the inverse of the Jeremiah 25, 30 judgment. Because that is focused on the earth and over a period of time goes out. Whereas this starts. This is on the creation. Exactly. And comes down and to the... And culminates in right. the second coming. Okay. But you're going to get so many different judgments that the, the, the well, I'll give you an example. This is the next principle. So we see God utters a judgment on the whole secondary creation. You're going to have areas of the secondary creation that currently are peaceful. They're going to become corrupted before this thing is over because the Luciferians. Once they are released, when they're in prison, once they are released, they're going to be free to go forth. Okay. One example of that, Revelation 12. Turn over there. Revelation 12, verse 3 and 4. Revelation 12, 3 and 4. John sees this <clears throat> symbolic vision which takes place in the heavens. It's nothing to do with the earth. Mm. There appeared another wonder in heaven or in the heavens. Behold, the great red dragon, which we know is Lucifer, having seven heads and ten horns, that's the fourth empire, and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail. His tail is the imprisoned Luciferian's that will be free to follow him at this time. Okay. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, <clears throat> the star group that are currently guarding, guarding the heavens, the pristine heavens that have not been corrupted, but are going to cast out a third of the stars and they're going to corrupt them, the heavens. Do the third part of the stars of heaven and to cast them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. She brought forth a man child that was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. That's the prototokis sign. This is talking about the rapture. Mm -hmm. He's caught up, glorified, uh, to be in the presence of the Father at this time. Right. This is what takes place at the time of the, the glorification of the saints, in other words. That sets in motion <coughs> the beginning right. of the expansion, okay. again, of the Luciferian forces. Mm -hmm. Their armies fan out to dominate the creation. Lucifer takes control of the earth, fourth empire, wipes the human race out totally, dominates everything, he takes over a third of the heavens, sets up his mercantile system, 
and then they go forth dominating everything they can. Okay. So should we understand that from the verse, Revelation 12, verse 7, and there was war in heaven, Michael, mm -hmm. is, for want of a better term, the beginning of the Jeremiah 2 judgment over a protracted period of time. Uh, because prior the, to... The Jeremiah... The, Mm. Yes. The Jeremiah 2 uh, 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 judgment we just read. Because prior to Revelation 12, 7, we see the Luciferians still causing all sorts of problems. Yeah. For, for, for well, it's, it's more of the Isaiah 34 judgment. Okay. Can we quickly look at that? Come ye near, we just read it. Come ye near all oh, the nations. Oh, yes, 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 okay. Where God is going to judge the whole creation. Right. And he's going to deal with their armies. He's going to deal with they're evil mm. but it's going to be in stages over a protracted period of time. time the stages are going to bring rebellious regions into right. the dominion of the Lord so they are really interconnected aren't they the Isaiah 34 and the Jeremiah 2 Isaiah 34 yeah, well Isaiah 25 beginning of Sorrows that okay. sets everything okay. in motion. Okay. Then you have a ripple effect, but it gets more and more intense, right. more and more um, volatile as it progresses, and it reaches more and more of the creation. Yes. But let's go on. Scripture teaches when they are liberated, the heavens, they will be moved to rejoice in their new found freedom. Thank you, Lord. Now, each scripture we're going to read refers to a different group of heavens mm -hmm. because there are different things they're going to experience over a different period of time. It's not going to be one fell swoop. Psalms 50, verse 6. Georgia, if you have a question, don't hesitate to ask. I will, thanks. You are not interrupting anything. We expect people to question us because this doesn't go down easy a lot of times. And, uh, Let me explain something really quickly to Georgia. Georgia, when you're hearing what you're saying, a picture is being painted in my mind. He's hearing what you're saying. A picture is being painted in his mind. And what will happen is you'll prompt questions out of me and him because of your question, it's that's the way God has designed it. Praise the Lord. Yes, you uh, you integrate with us and you motivate us. By asking the questions you asked when we were at the Bible study before uh, motivated us. We appreciate that. That's wonderful. Psalms 50, verse 4 to 6. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. This is Jeremiah 25. Mm. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. The heavens in which they see the initiation of God's plan of restoration rejoice they're looking they're observing they're participating in the call to gather his people they are rejoicing so the heavens are rejoicing at Lucifer at this point they're no they're rejoicing at the Lord no, they're rejoicing because the Lord has done that thing yes. but they're telling Lucifer that they are now free well, in a sense, they weren't in captivity. This okay. is the, he's calling the saints out of the heavens to gather around him mm. to send to the earth to receive their rewards. Oh, okay. So the then, heavens are rejoicing because they see this thing is being set in motion. Right. Now. So they're not quite there yet. Yeah. yeah. It's the but they see it's the beginning. Mm -hmm. Notice what it goes on to say. The heavens shall rejoice. The heavens shall declare. His righteousness, righteousness, for God is judge himself. So <clears throat> and um, what you find here is the beginning of the liberation process, starting with the right. gathering. 